Let's take a quick look at ways in which we can alter the default calendar in Microsoft Project. First of all, you notice that whenever you enter tasks into Microsoft Project, let's just enter three of them here right away, and we give them some duration and link them together perhaps. You will notice that uh, this particular task takes four days, but you notice that it spans the Saturday and Sunday, and Microsoft Project knows that Saturday and Sunday are non-working times. We may have other types of calendars we may want to apply that would describe other uh, days that may be non-working time, or perhaps holidays in which our employees, for some bizarre reason, don't want to work. Let's go under Project and I want to show you a couple things here. First under project information you can see that the calendar is standard. There are a couple calendars that come with uh, Microsoft Project. Standard, 24 hours, night shift. Scott is one that I've created and I'll show you how to create those in a minute. We can apply the calendars then to an entire project. We can also apply them to a particular task. So we can come under advanced here and we can actually uh, give it a particular calendar uh, that we would like to apply just for this specific task. We can also do the same with resources. We can go to a specific individual and we can apply a specific calendar for that individual. Maybe they only work on Monday, Wednesday, uh, and Fridays of a given week. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to Project and then Change Working Time. And this is where we can make exceptions or alterations to our calendar. So we can, for example, change the standard calendar, or we might perhaps want to create a new calendar. That way we can create our own customizations, and we could be able to move that calendar uh, back and forth between different projects, or uh, create a file that we could kind of use as a template for future projects as well. So let's click Create New Calendar. Instead of a, a copy of standard, we'll call this Scott's Great Calendar, and you can call it whatever you would like. And now notice that we're going to be making alterations to the working time for Scott's Great Calendar. So there are days that we may want to accept <coughs> from uh, working. For example, I know that um, later in the year, the first Monday of every September, September 5th, is going to be Labor Day. So I can simply type in Labor Day uh, to my uh, exception list here, and Labor Day is now a non-working day. So I could can do this for every September uh, from now until hundreds of years into the future if I'd like. But what's really cool about Labor Day is I know that uh, Labor Days happen to occur on the first Mondays. So what I can do is actually come in here and I can, I'm going to change this to, uh, by double clicking on it, or going to details either way, I'm going to change this to reoccur. So I'm going to say this reoccurs not on September 5th, okay, but on the first Monday of September and I'm going to let it go, let's say, out for the next 10 years. Okay, so I don't have to do that for every Labor Day. I can simply set a rule with this details that says that on the first Monday of September, we're going to have a non-working day. Unfortunately, this doesn't work for all U.S. holidays. So, for example, we're going to take off Christmas, and let's look this uh, ahead here. We normally take off Christmas Eve, let's say, which is the 24th, and Christmas, which is the 25th. Well, this year, those dates happen to come on a Saturday and a Sunday. Now, for some bizarre reason, our employees are actually going to expect some time off. We can't just say, well, it happened to occur on a Saturday and Sunday, so uh, that's great for me. I'll expect to see you on Friday and on Monday. What we'll typically do is we're going to exempt then the 23rd, so I'm going to put um, 2011 Xmas Eve, and so that's going to be an exception. I'm also going to put in Christmas Day as an exception. 
Okay, so for those um, holidays that are related to a particular calendar date, July 4th, um, Christmas, the 24th and 25th of December, we're going to have to make some sort of exception so that our uh, employees will actually get those days off, but more importantly so Microsoft Project can correctly calculate uh, the uh, working time and knows that uh, there is not going to get uh, as much work done during these two weeks as we normally would during any other given two weeks. Now we can also change this uh, on a uh, uh, more detailed basis if you want as far as our work week. So we can actually uh, set up a situation where uh, you notice here that Sunday is uh, uh, scheduled to not be a work day. Um, Monday is, and it says here we're using uh, default times for all these. And uh, Saturday is not. But we can actually go in and override the default days. So I, what I can do is let's say that we have this employee that's only going to work on Monday, Tuesday, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I'm going to set, first of all, my Tuesdays and Thursdays to non-working time. And then on Mondays, that person's going to come in at 7 a.m. Yeah. And they're going to work till 7 p.m. Same thing here on Wednesday. I'm going to set this day so that they come in at, whoops, I click in here, 7 a.m. And they're going to leave at 7 p.m. And on Friday, I'm going to once again override uh, the defaults. and set to these 12-hour work days. Okay, so now if you look, uh, oops. Okay, so now if you look at uh, what we have set here for these different days, um, on Sunday we're just using the default, which is no work. On Monday we've overridden the default to specific work times. Uh, on Tuesday we've set it to non-working time. On Wednesday, we've overridden the default, set it to this longer day. Thursday, once again, we've set to non-working. And Friday, uh, we've set to this longer uh, day, although, uh, oops, it looked like I didn't take it there. Let me try that again. Okay, And then uh, Saturday is set to non-working time. Okay, it looks like it took it that time. Um, so we can actually alter then. In this case, we're altering it for all of our calendars. So you can see now that our calendar moving forward is going to have all these days blocked off. Okay, so for Scott's great calendar, whenever we apply that to a task or a project or to a resource, it will use uh, this information about the exceptions that we've programmed in, as well as any definitions on how the work week works. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how we can alter the calendars in Microsoft Project. I'll show you uh, a way that we can actually uh, now take this calendar and make it available to uh, other projects as well. One of the ways that we could do this is we could simply save this project, uh, delete the tasks that are out of it, and use it as a template for starting uh, new uh, projects. That is uh, not a bad idea, especially if you're going to be moving from one computer to another, say that you're working in a computer lab or something like that. Um, what we can also do is go up here to File, and then we can go to Organize, Organize Global Template. And under Calendars, it'll allow us to take, for example, Scott's great calendar that we just made and move that into our global configuration file. And that way, this will be available to any subsequent uh, projects that cre we create on this uh, uh, particular uh, computer. So that's another way that you can do it is you can keep that file um, that we created
previously here with the calendar information and we can simply then um, open that file and move it into uh, the global configuration of any computer that we happen to be on and then you will see that uh, once I've done that and I go to create a new project that if I go up here to project information now my calendar could be Scott's Great Calendar and so uh, any tasks that we have that are going to be uh, used with this uh, project will now inherit all the uh, changes that we've made in Scott's Great Calendar.